Hi, my name is Sarah Davidson. I'm the data curator at MoveBank, and I'm excited to share some developments at MoveBank since the last Biologging Science Symposium and opportunities to get involved. As a brief background, many shared biologging databases are used by researchers to coordinate research for shared methodologies within regions and for taxonomic groups. However, a lot of biologging data sets remain undiscoverable on local computers or smaller organizational databases. In the first half of this talk, I'll outline a set of tools and services that we've built at MoveBank over the past decade to increase participation in these efforts to harmonize and share data. For those not familiar, MoveBank is a global database for animal tracking and animal-borne sensor data and a set of tools and services for working with data throughout its life cycle. As an outline of what we're going to cover, here's an overview of how the MoveBank database interacts with data coming in, the green arrows, and data going out, the blue arrows, and how they're used across a variety of different applications. MoveBank is a growing global resource hosted by the Max Planck Institute of Animal Behavior, and it's available for use by anyone across countries, species, research methods, source of funding, and all of the services are provided free for users. We have long-term funding through the Max Planck Society and shorter-term funding through government and private grants. As you can see, Use of MoveBank has grown a lot. Data volume of MoveBank has grown a lot, even since the last uh, biologging symposium in 2017. To briefly describe the data model, researchers create and manage data within studies. And within these studies that they create, they manage animal locations and other sensor measurements as well as information about animals, tags, and deployments in their studies. All this information is harmonized to a shared data model and vocabulary. Researchers maintain ownership of their data and decide how they want to share them. So this allows both for public data sharing and also controlled access sharing. You can assign other users to be co-administrators or give them download access to your study. If you make data public, you have some embargo options. One is to censor more recent data, and a second is to schedule a date in the future on which you'll make your data public. We've worked with dozens of tag manufacturers to develop automated data feeds that allow researchers to subscribe to have their data automatically sent to their studies in MoveBank as they are collected and sent by the tag. Now, because there are no shared data standards across manufacturers, we have to develop these individually with each of these companies. After researchers have added data to MoveBank, there are two common types of data management steps that they need to take. The first is dealing with outliers. So you can manually identify and flag outliers on a map, or you can also run a variety of filter algorithms that we have implemented within MoveBank. The second is to manage deployment information. So this is information about your tags, animals, and deployments, in particular, allowing you to manage complex redeployment schemes. So where you may have tags being redeployed on other animals or collecting test data before you deploy them, with the most critical piece being that you can identify which collected measurements are assigned to an individual of a known species. So when we combine this harmonized data as well as publicly described APIs, this allows you to discover and access data through other applications based on the permissions assigned by the data owners. The Animal Tracker app allows the public and researchers in the field to follow the current movements of animals. And if researchers share their data with the public, users can also contribute observations directly to researchers within the app. Researchers use the Animal Tagger app to collect capture and deployment details while they're in the field. Then once you return online, you can manage this information further and then submit it directly to your study in MoveBank.
The MoveBank data repository allows you to formally publish data. This is typically to meet data archiving requirements when publishing peer-reviewed papers. And this provides you with the DOI and citation for your data. MoveApps is a brand new analysis platform. This allows you to build repeatable analysis workflows out of user contributed analysis apps. And for more on this, I would refer you to Andrea Kolsch's talk, which is also in this session for a lot more information. Lastly, the Environmental Data Automated Track Annotation System allows users to link animal tracking data and related time location records to hundreds of environmental variables. These are available through global remote sensing and weather reanalysis products. Through using MoveBank, researchers have now brought together these thousands of individual studies. Now, these are what have traditionally been considered part of this long tail of ecological data that are very heterogeneous and hard to bring together. These services are enabling countless individual instances of data management, sharing, reuse, and they're also supporting novel and large-scale kinds of uses. So for the second part of this talk, I'm going to illustrate this with five examples. One thing we've learned over the years is that just as much as we are connecting data, we're also connecting people and expertise. And so in the examples, you'll see how these connections are an important part of these big scale data uses. The first example is synthesis analyses and archive collections. The Arctic Animal Movement Archive is a living archive of curated animal tracking data sets the owners have chosen to join and are committed to ensuring that their data remain discoverable, and they are interested in collaborating on uses of their data related to the Arctic uh, research, management, and conservation. You can read our paper, see the links below, for how we used data assemblages from the archive to uncover climate influences on golden eagle migrations over decades, on caribou parturition across Western North America, and on movements of six terrestrial mammal species. In the second example, I wanna explain how you can use the services through MoveBank for dynamic monitoring and applied wildlife management. And this includes when the data are being collected primarily for research purposes. Um, in this example, we're looking at white storks that are being tracked by the Max Planck Institute of Animal Behavior. And in most or all of these cases, these birds are, are tagged as nestlings. And so they have developed a procedure for identifying mortalities and cause of death. Step one, they're using the live data feeds to bring in the data regularly as the tags are deployed. Second, within Move apps, they are running an app called the Morning Report that lets them get a summary of recent data each morning and quickly identify cases where there's a possible mortality. So we see a change in, in sensor measurements, the movements stop. And the question is always, has the animal died? Has the tag fallen off? And so what they can do to find out more about this, since these may be thousands of miles away, is to go into the animal tracker and there is an alert system where you can send an alert out to all app users to say, hey, we want to try and recover this transmitter. From there, they can actually communicate with whoever can get out and get that transmitter. They can communicate with them directly in the app, collect pictures, information about the status of the tag and the animal, and if there's been a mortality, the apparent cause of death. So by doing this over a long period of time, they've been able to aggregate the cause of mortality for 171 white storks. As you can see here, the primary cause of mortality within Africa appears to be hunting, and then within Europe appears to be electrocution. The fourth example, I wanted to highlight three separate projects that are bringing together hemispheric scale bird migration data for migratory bird atlases, dynamic mapping, and conservation tools. These projects are the Audubon Migratory Bird Initiative, the Migratory Connectivity Project, and the Eurasian African Bird Migration Atlas. For each of these projects, organizations are using MoveBank to acquire tracking data, and they're doing this along with sources such as eBird and ringing databases that allow them to get a large scale picture of what these different species are doing throughout their annual cycles. The fourth example, 
MoveBank is partnering with the International Biologging Society to support the COVID-19 Biologging Initiative. So this has several large-scale analyses ongoing to investigate responses of terrestrial and marine species to changed human activity patterns during the COVID-19 pandemic. Again, researchers here are using MoveBank to identify relevant data and partners and then obtaining access to data for this project. And finally, the last example, I wanted to share how government agencies are using MoveBank as an archiving platform. So in this example, both the French National Bird Ringing Scheme and Wyoming Game and Fish Department in the United States are required to archive data collected through tagging permits that they issue. Now these agencies both approached us because they didn't have the in-house infrastructure to manage the increasingly large amounts of data and files they were receiving. And so we've worked with them to develop protocols that they can share with permittees to put their data on MoveBank and then share privately with the agencies. Then the agencies can access this already organized data to archive locally. Thank you so much for watching the talk. I wanted to just end here with a few ways that you can get involved. First, we're looking for more people to join and participate in the COVID-19 Biologging Initiative and the Arctic Animal Movement Archive. We're also looking for people who want to participate in development of the new MoveApps platform. Thirdly, we've got a brand new NASA-funded project looking at animal movements within the Yukon to Yellowstone Migration Corridor. And lastly, through these examples, I hope I've shown how there are lots of ways that you can initiate and implement your own projects using MoveBank. I want to thank everyone involved with MoveBank and its development and all of our partners and funders and Thank you again. Feel free to contact me at the address below for questions about anything in this presentation.